Welcome to Chewing the Cud with Mike Benyon Rowe and Mist Kinsman. And I said if you replace the coffee in the morning with a green tea, you lose about 87% of the joy of your life. Fair enough. Oh. Well, this week we welcome Mist to the show. Welcome, Mist. Hello. Well, this week I'm going to bring you a story about a daytime TV show that's uh, continued to fall from grace, as well as a new game. Oh, very exciting. And then we're going to get all up close and personal with Mist in Spotlight. But on screen now you can see our social media info. Just search for at the Could TV. And as people who have popped up in our comments go along the bottom of the screen, it's time for Mike in the Buzz. <laughs> Cost of living can be a bit of a tricky issue. Mm -hmm, for everyone at the moment. Yeah. Um, how, do you help, how do you keep your food bill down? Um, I've cut back a lot and I'm trying to be on a diet anyway, so oh, okay. I see it as a, a golden lining. That's good. I just Silver lining. <laughs> so I prefer the golden lining <laughs> because that a golden cloud's where golden showers come from. Exactly. I've been told. Um, well, I've just stopped paying my water bill. It's just easier. I've not. Don't come after me. Uh, <laughs> Bailiff, how do you have a wash? Gone. Huh? Oh, no, it's like, I get water through the tap. I just don't pay for it. Fair enough. I do. Please don't come after me. It's a joke. <laughs> United Utilities knocking on my door going, come on, pay up. Um, so, well, this is about a couple in the US mm -hmm. who have come up with an ingenious way of keeping their food bill down, and that's by foraging. Oh, I've done foraging, but as a... As a very fun thing in St Albans in a very nice bistro kind of a way, not because I couldn't <laughs> afford my food. Foraging in a bistro? Uh, they have lots of fields food, and countryside <laughs> out there, so you go out berry picking okay. and, and, and grabbing like various different shrubbery and stuff. They take it back to the pub and they cook it up. It's a really good experience. And do they charge you for that? Yes, they do. So you have to farm your own food. <laughs> <laughs> they're just going to cook it for you. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to guess it wasn't cheap. Um, it wasn't it, like three pound. No, it was London, so of course not. <laughs> but it was genuinely very nice food and it was made from what we just picked up and they do it's a whole experience did they let you watch the cooking because i've got this, yes. this theory that they just go right that's great thanks very much for that bin <laughs> and i put up a can of beans yeah. just pop a meal in the microwave <laughs> you're ready in three minutes no no it's a it's a full experience the foraging then you kind of get like a bit like one of those walks you used to do when you're at primary school and the teacher pointed out that's a dock leaf and that that's a steam nettle and that you know all that kind of stuff kind of fancy then... pants school did you go to we were allowed we got chained in when kids were like out, out playing mm -hmm. the gates to the school were literally chained up yeah no it's all in the countryside oh yeah it's very very idyllic experience little house on the prairie me oh that's <laughs> like with the with the with the um the diseases and stuff as well or just the... yeah and the questionable fashionable fashion of bonnets and stuff yeah child of the 80s then <laughs> 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 I said no. Uh, well, this couple in the US are, are Eric Joseph Lewis, who's 41, and Jess Russell, who's 26, mm -hmm. who have been basically foraging for wild food, which includes roadkill. Um, so they go out and they find things that basically anything that they can find that they can eat. Well, is that that's kind of waste not, want not? Yeah, but would you really want something that's been mowed down by a, a Fiat Panda? Someone's poor tip, tabby cat, you know, still limping away. Well, <laughs> again, in the cost of living crisis, you don't know exactly <laughs> what's going into the takeaway, do you? I love a rat burger. <laughs> Questionable burgers from the side of a van. Like, how is this three pounds? They're like... <laughs> <laughs> I'll never probably be a vegetarian because I like my meat too much, but I do like... <laughs> You've read my grinder. <laughs> <laughs> But I do care about how it's sourced, and I think that's like perfectly ethical. Okay. You've not had to farm them, you've not put them through any horrific process, it's just unfortunate. Well, they kind of have put them through a horrific process of being mowed down by a car. <laughs> well, only if they're driving the car to run them over. <laughs> Doesn't say that they're Quick, not... Quick, we need tea tonight! <laughs> beep, beep! <laughs> Doesn't say that they don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> did say Americans. <laughs> just saying. Um, so, yeah, so... That there are options out there if you've got a, a cost of living crisis kind of issue. Just don't eat hedgehogs. Mm, be a bit prickly on the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I do know how you can cook hedgehog. With, with I have meat. no idea why I remember this. 
you, you cover it in clay, so all the prickles go in clay, you turn it into like basically a scotch egg made out of clay, you pop that in the That's oven. That's break your teeth. Crack out the, crack out the clay, all the, all the uh, prickles come out, and you're left with hedgehog. <laughs> I have no idea where I picked that information up from, but verify it, it's true. Weird <laughs> adult. <laughs> so, so moving on from eating hedgehogs like an ice cream. Uh, <laughs> num num num. Uh, <laughs> have you ever flown anywhere long uh, haul? Not locally. I need. I nearly decided to after getting stranded with the train strikes. What about a long haul flight? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not huge, but Gran Canaria. If okay. you know what I mean. No, I don't. <laughs> Have you never been? Never been to Gran Canaria. Oh, you should. You didn't. You? I, I've been told I'm not allowed to go. How come? Just, just. It'd be like a yawning hippo, um, <laughs> <sighs> with the teeth. Scarily. <laughs> um, so this is a story about someone who was on a, a long haul flight with Delta, mm -hmm. an American carrier, um, and basically they had a slight problem. They needed to nip to the toilet. Oh. But didn't make it. Oh. So um, they basically they made a flight turn around and reland because the diarrhea went everywhere. So Ooh. how was your flight, love? Oh, it was shit. Literally, <laughs> yeah, literally, it covered people. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Unfortunate. <It's> like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it was at the beginning of the flight as well, so that meant that they all lost the the flight slot. So they had to then wait. The clothes had already been put on in the baggage in the hold, so they had to be fully deplaned so people could get changed. Into? Into clothes they had in the hold. Oh, OK. Out of the... <laughs> into rubber gimp suits to carry <laughs> on the cars. Um, you never know. Somebody might have been in on the plane who's into that stuff. There, there could be. If you've ever flown Delta, they're like sardines anyway. It's, it's kind of a bit... Well, last, last time I came back on a flight, with the recycled air and everything, everybody caught a cold from that. It was post, just post-COVID, and it was right. definitely COVID. That's just cycling air. Mm -hmm. oh. Poo particles. Yeah. All over the place. Yeah. Now, I... If you can smell it, it's in you. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can taste it, it's in you too. Um, oh. <laughs> And if you can taste it, you can interact with us on social media. It's at the Could TV. And now it's time for our story of the week. How do you feel about karaoke? I wish I didn't like it as much as I do, but I do really enjoy it when I do can it. Can you sing? No. Good. Good, because neither can I. It doesn't stop me. Um, but I've been told my alternate lyrics to Part of This World from The Little Mermaid are phenomenal. Instead of listing all the shit she finds in here, I list sex toys. That I need to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not allowed to do it on the show because it's probably <laughs> <laughs> And the gallery saying we've not got enough peeps. We have. There's not many swear words. It's all about dildos and, sec and butt plugs are playing. Yeah, rampant rabbit's a safe thing to say. Sometimes. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> it depends whether you're talking about the fluffy thing on a rampage. Or something going inside. Anyway, um, so this story is about the world's most deadly karaoke song. Deadly? How's deadly. a karaoke song deadly? <laughs> Let it go that high note. Um, <laughs> 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 this is actually the song. Most people that die while this song is is happening, right? And it's My Way by Frank Sinatra. Oh, so, okay. So Isn't that just because people who really enjoy that song are ancient and about to die? A little bit. Um, <laughs> but no, the recorded deaths while that song is being sung at karaoke is higher than any other song because of my way. Who's taking these statistics? Karaoke people? <laughs> Maybe Got another DJs. one! <laughs> Tick! <laughs> Maybe there's a big WhatsApp group between all the karaoke DJs. Uh, going, guess what? It wasn't Mac? It was Mac the Knife this time. Well, that's different. <laughs> or maybe it's the DJs of these karaoke sessions who just really hate hearing that song again, and just as soon as it comes oh, on, pull out a gun and blow them. Randomly going. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly, maybe. 
Um, so if you hear that sound karaoke, stop, run. Actually, don't run because you'll trip, fall, Ed, dead. So that'll probably be that. But that's all from the buzz this week. Oh, thanks for that, Mike. It's um, <laughs> lovely to start on such a gloomy note. And now the end is near. <laughs> and so I coming up is Miz and the Showbiz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist and Mike. Now let's get ready for the showbiz with Mist. <laughs> Um, so it's been a while since I've uh, watched EastEnders, but uh, I've been tempted back because they've brought back Sydney. Sin as in the doll? No, as in Ian's wife, the one who was dead. Oh, okay. And she's apparently back from the death. Well, the last time I watched it, she was on drugs. She was like on heroin or something. Or she looked like she was on heroin. Well, married to Ian, you wouldn't, you wouldn't blame her, would you? It's Ginger, he must have a massive penis. Mm, possibly. Yeah. But, um, so EastEnders has been in the news for a couple of different reasons, actually. Okay. And uh, first of all, do you remember Stacey Slater? Was she the one that had a child that was a sister that wasn't? It's soap, it probably. I can't remember that That's story. Like, like. You're not my mother. <laughs> yes, I am. No, 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 no. That was another character. But, okay. you know, same family. Oh, OK. All yeah. right. Um, but she's had a daughter and she's all grown up now and she's having a daughter. So Stacey Slate is a grandmother now. OK. Which is a little bit insane. Um, but sh the thing that's ended up in the news is that they've named the baby Charlie. Ah. Oh, which... After cocaine. Say again? Okay. No, no. Um, they had an Uncle Charlie in the show for a while. He was a taxi driver. I remember that one. Yeah, he was really little, kind. Had, and they had Little Mo, who was fat. Yeah. Little Mo was huge. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> That's a so joke. it's that family. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. So you think it's a nice homage to that character mm -hmm. who's not been in it for a while. No, apparently it's Charlie XEX. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and it's a really... To be fair, I've seen the clip from it. I've not actually gone back and watched the show, and I really should. But I've seen the clip <laughs> from it, and it's beautifully written. And, um, in fact, Charlie XCX has referred to it and said that uh, it must be gays in the writing room and she's very, very grateful to them. Yeah, I, that's... It's good that it's on TV, because if that was real life, that child would be bullied. <laughs> Properly bullied. Well, I've, I've heard worse names. Because if you think, like, calling your child Britney, that's a, that's a gamble. Mm -hmm. right? Calling your child Britney at the start of the 2000s, right? It's either OK... Mm -hmm. yeah, or that, that girl's going to be a one-hit wonder. I, as I said, I've heard worse. You could name your child Khaleesi. OK. Game of Thrones. Ah, Jason Momoa, and then I tuned out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was very dishy in that. I couldn't get through the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could. It just took a lot of time. <laughs> um, yeah. I used to play that with Spartacus. Um, but <laughs> as I said, EastEnders is in the news for other reasons as well. They did quite well at the NTAs. Um, as usual, getting the serial drama and the best serial drama performance. Well done, them. And Still waiting it has for to... our invite. NTAs, <laughs> just, just saying. Mm hmm. Um, but it also must be noted that they have also given out a Rising Star Award to Bobby Brazer. Bobby Brazer? Bobby Brazer is the son of Jeff Brazer, who he gave a very, very touching thank you to. But he's also Jade Goody's son. Oh, right. I'm a minging. That one. Yeah. Yeah. He's all grown up and he's a proper soap actor now. Is he fit? He is actually quite handsome. He's like a proper model too. Like not my type, but you can you can tell why he's a model. And <laughs> yeah, he really he does look good, and he's made the move into acting, and good for he's him. been recognised for it. And as I said, he did a very very touching speech. It's worth checking out. Okay, well, I'm, I'm sure that's that's very emotional and very well done. The gallery, if we could get pictures of sent up, that'd be great. <laughs> But there is also controversy at the NTAs. Dun dun dun. Mm. Scandal. Scandal. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, it's about one of these shows where you've got a couple of people chatting on a sofa and apparently it's done quite well over the past 13 years. Has Anton Deck died? No, no. It's uh, a little show called This Morning. <laughs> yeah, it's still, still scandalous. Yeah, oh, Holly. Hello, Holly. Holly. <laughs> Bless her little cotton socks. Mm. Um, it has to be said, and I quote here, she doesn't know what the future holds because for the first time in 13 years, they have not won the award. I wonder why. Mm -hmm. Best daytime show went to uh, The Repair Shop. Yeah, and I don't think that they will uh, be able to take this morning into The Repair Shop and fix that unfortunate mess. The Repair Shop one? The Repair Shop one, yeah. See, that just tells me that people aren't even bothering anymore. <laughs> like, this morning you're going to win it again, so let's just not bother. Right? Well, what would, you be, what would be your um, fair alternative to take the crown from them? We're well, not daytime. Oh, well, this is true. <laughs> no, for the watershed, because I keep saying the word <laughs> <laughs> um, Well, it's June the Cud where we can say <laughs> Can't say can't say can't say why can't you say can't i don't really watch daytime tv because you know job mm, or it's, hangover well that's a weekend thing no this is true so i've not watched um it's like the the breakfast show on channel four for a very long time what's it called the breakfast show on channel four you don't need brunch oh okay I, th yeah. I thought you were gonna say about the big breakfast <laughs> Okay, that's no, going that back in the week. <laughs> <laughs> to watch the big breakfast. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but it, it's kind of obvious that everybody stopped trying because they just mm -hmm. know that's going to win. It's like um, Ant and Deck always win, and it's like mm -hmm. so. Who does it? Who do they go up against? The X Factor. They don't try to do anything new. Yeah. Because why would you bother? Yeah, it's a fair point. It's an absolute fair point. Moving into uh, other TV shows that you might be more interested in, I know that you are a fan of Heartstopper. I am a f I am a fan of, of of emotionally harming myself watching art stuff. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I have. This, it is a beautiful show. A friend of mine asked me whether it was reminiscent of my own experience at school, and I laughed in their face. Um, <laughs> the person was a straight person, I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, they were. Yes. It's like it's it's. I hope that that's the way the world is for kids at school these days, mm -hmm. and it is a it is a genuinely beautiful thing but I watch it because it's kind of like a wish fulfillment thing. Mm -hmm. It makes my heart sing. It makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside, even though I know it's a myth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> episode one, sat next to the, the handsome rugby player boy. I did that at school. His name was Jim. Mm -hmm. He's not grown up pretty. Sorry, Jim. Um, and he and didn't turn around and fall in love with you. He punched me in the arm. Yeah. That's yeah. growing up in the 80s in the UK. <laughs> So, yeah, there's a little element of wishful So I, I'm just realising something, that, that that was the start of handsome men punching me. <laughs> do, we, do we need therapy? Oh, no, we don't need therapy. Okay. We just need to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just to realise that causational link has just occurred in my brain. Um, <laughs> Yes. Ah, there we go. They, so they yeah, there's, there's an element of wish fulfillment, and they're beautiful, yeah. and they're cute, <laughs> and, and the whole cast is amazing, and it's a it's a really it's nice, really well show. cast. Yeah, it's they're really, really well good done. actors, right? Um, and what I've actually really enjoyed is that they have had a knock-on effect in society. So mm -hmm. on the way into the show today, I saw two, I'm going to say, early teenage boys holding hands, mm -hmm. walking down the street, and that made me want to run them over without jealousy. But <laughs> I was also, you know, if that's because shows like Heartstopper mm -hmm. have been around and said, look, this is okay and you'll be okay and safe, then that's a good thing. Do you know Do you know what it was for me at school? And I was still not quite aware. I don't think it was until like I was 19 that I went, oh, yeah, no, I'm actually gay. Um, there was a period of thinking I might be bisexual before that. I did the like bisexual that. lie too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a thing, though bisexuals are their own thing and stuff like that. I shouldn't deny that. No, no, but, no, and it's just, it was a life I would lie. I'd, no, 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 no vaginas, no nothing. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm bisexual. <laughs> <laughs> don't beat me up, I'll shag everyone. Oh. Well, no, I was very open-minded. It wasn't until I uh, had the 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 experience to realize oh no this bit is not for me um weird instead of out it's weird yeah it is <laughs> isn't it uh <laughs> sorry ladies um uh, but for me going back earlier and my understanding from tv about what was okay and what wasn't okay i have a really intense experience of a gay character on grange hill 
mm -hmm. and there being a massive fight between two uh, two schools and, and a derelict playground somewhere, and them going, get off him, yeah, but he's a puff, yeah, but he's our puff. <laughs> I can't remember the episode, but you know, that that stuck with me. That's like idealised for the eighties and nineties, though, mm -hmm. wasn't it? That was like that was as good as you're going to get acceptance. Yeah. It's like you're still a, f but we're going to protect you because you're our. F kind mm -hmm. of idea. It's, yeah, yeah. So I'm glad that this is here, and like you said, it's having a knockout on effect. It is. But the reason it's in the news, they've revealed the uh, first title of the first episode of season three. <gasps> Felched. No, you'd hope. But it's going to be called Love. Yeah. Isn't that romantic? It's a bit anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, so Lee, who's not here because of, we're going to say personal reasons. Um, he's basically, he has a, a thing about these two. Mm -hmm. And basically what we're talking about, it, it's like, why have they not f***ed yet? Yes. Yeah, because, I've, I've, you know, I've teenage heard. boys, they, they would be at it like rabbits. And they're going, well, it is, but... You can't say that to Olivia Colman. <laughs> Sorry, Mum, I'm off for a shag. She was the queen. <laughs> well, again, I think it's... Uh, and this might be also the knock-on effect of what media you can access. For, for me, when I was growing up, even in primary school, finding a dirty mag in the bushes, you had access to that kind of material. You had to but... hunting for porn. <laughs> <laughs> no, kids today don't know about the having to hunt for porn. This goes back to foraging. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's all from Showbiz this week. Thanks for that. I'm just now reminiscing finding porn in a bush that was always burnt and wet. Don't know why. Uh, but stick around, because coming up, we've got a quiz for Mist in our Game of the Week. You're watching Chewing the Cud. Now we're going to play a new game called That's Mighty Interesting, or TMI as it can be known. And this one is for Mist to venture off into the screen of green. So, off you pop. See you in a bit. Ta-ra. Game of the Week. So this new game that we've got, That's Mighty Interesting, or TMI, as it's also known. Um, it's not a knockoff of any other type of interesting factoid show. What we're going to do is, Mist is going to tell me a, a bit of a factoid, and I have to try and work out what the word is going to be. So, I've had a look at this list and I'm not too sure whether you're going to get some of these because uh, they're quite intelligent words. I'm intelligent. Um, so, I've had a look at the uh, list of words here and uh, I don't know how many of these you're going to get. They're uh, quite intellectual. I'm an intellectual person. Uh, well, we'll find out, won't we? I sucked the dick of many librarian. <sighs> Did you do any reading whilst you were down there, though? So I tattoos. <laughs> okay then, well let's test you out. That's what I said. <laughs> First question for you. The space between your eyebrows is called... The crinkly bit. It's not the crinkly bit, it's, it's the bit the Noel Gallagher's don't have. The Noel Gallagher's? The Gallagher Brothers. The Gallagher's. <laughs> it's the bit the Gallagher Brothers don't have. Is it the facial clitoris? No, but um, kind of you're close. I uh, think, kind of... um, think glands. Uh, it, it sounds Italian, actually. A testicolo. No, no, not testicolo. Um, but yeah, it, it sounds. It sounds like um, when you say thank, thank you, thank you to a lady, or that uh, she looks really good. Not a bit of problem with that. I've never had to speak Italian in that sort of situation. <laughs> well, I don't know if it sounds like that. Are you giving up? I've given up, yeah. Okay, the word is glabella. <laughs> I do not know if it's pronounced that way. I am not a doctor, but apparently it's the glabella. Oh, that's mighty interesting. So, are you ready for your next question? I, uh, I'm always ready. You, you might get this one, we'll see. The way it smells after it rains is called... What's my favourite word in the world? Petrichor. That's the one! He's got it! It's my favourite word. <laughs> it is petrichor. Well done. Yeah, and of course, bugger me, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, OK, you should know this one. I think most people know this. The plastic or metallic coating at the end of your shoelaces is called... The felch. No, it's not called the felch. Just the tip. Just go with your toggles when you were you fiddling with your cagoule when you were a little scout. 
Scout Master? <laughs> no, we all have Caleb. that kind of childhood. No. Are you giving up? <laughs> I think it's wise. It's called the aglet. Oh, the aglet. Yeah, a little aglet. Well, f me sideways. That's mighty interesting. Oh, I haven't had lunch yet, so this may happen. Have you uh, not had lunch? It's uh, nine at night. I know. <laughs> I'm very, very hungry. I can I'm on them. a diet. That's the problem. That when your stomach rumbles, that's called a cum gurgle. Uh, think it's one of those words that sounds sounds like it is. Is that on 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 Onomatopoeic? Yes. It's one of those words. Oh. Or at least mine sound like that anyway. Sounds like it onomatopoeic. Um let's do it rumbles. Mm-hmm. A growler. So like a growl but underneath underneath all, all of the belly. <laughs> So it's slightly muted. It's a not quite a growler. Slightly muted growler. It's a muted growler. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I give up. It's called a wamble. Are they not the small, the small things that collect litter? No, no, they're wombles. Oh. So if a womble had some roadkill for dinner, um, following from those Americans earlier on in the show, they might have a wamble. They'd be wombles from Wimbledon, commonly wambling free. Bag to my bottom and call me Susan. That's <laughs> mighty interesting. Uh, I, I really, I, I really don't know how to go about this next word, but uh, we'll, we'll give it a go. Um, the cry of a newborn baby is called. That's called. <laughs> okay, I'll not say that sort of thing then. Um, yeah, yeah, please don't. <laughs> that. Um, That'll get you arrested. <laughs> Sued more like, but um, it's it's not not to not to suggest howling into a cave, but um, it, it's very <laughs> it's a rimming. <laughs> um, it's it's very much associated with the place that this poor poor child has just come from. A vaginal. Close. It's actually very close. Very it sounds like vagina. that, but Roman. Smelly bridge. Very close to a vagina. <laughs> no, no, you, you're you're in the right ballpark. Oh, no, uh, never in the ballpark with a vagina. <laughs> but but say say the same word, but uh, um, like a Roman gladiator. <laughs> Is this vagina entertaining? <laughs> <laughs> no. The, the cry of a newborn baby, apparently. I do not know if this is true, uh, but apparently the cry of a newborn baby is called a vagitus. Well, that's more than a pickle. That's <laughs> mighty interesting. <sighs> okay, here we go. The prongs on a fork are called... Prongs. No, think uh, fog on the... <laughs> Literally just said. The prongs on a fork. The prongs of fork have prong. a particular name though, and it's not prong. Think, think the old, think, think the old Newcastle song, fog on the. Or have you got the? Clap. Oh goodness gracious. Uh... <laughs> Um, vines for tea leaves? Vines for tea, tea leaves? Oh, I'm, 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 give, I'm giving up. That, that was probably, I probably had some very good clues there, but it, it was, it was degrading. Um, the prongs of a fork are called tines. That was not that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I've, I've, I've definitely had this when I've had a fair too many cherries. The Regret. sheen. Say again. Regret. No, no. The sheen of light that you can see when you close your eyes and press your hands on them is called. Stupid thing to do. <laughs> look, look, press have your you, hands on closed eyes. Have you not rubbed your eyes when you're feeling hungover to try and wake yourself up? No, I just lie in the shower like normal people, sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> Wondering when the trick's going to go home. 
No, they've already left by then. They don't stay till the morning. <laughs> oh, yeah, so they're up by then. I only, um, I only date vampires, they've got to be gone by daylight. Um, <laughs> so we are we're looking for a word that describes the sheen of light you can see when you close your eyes and press your hands on them. A surprise. Um, it's like it's like that substance that glows in the dark. Everything glows in UV light. Well, only Band when you've spaffed all over them. So why I've banned them from my bedroom? Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever go into hotel rooms in the dark light <laughs> just to check? No. <laughs> <laughs> Although sometimes I take a dark light after I leave a hotel room and go, good luck cleaning that mess up, love. Um, <laughs> Two weeks I stayed in a hotel recently. It's massive. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the Charlie. The Charlie sheen. When when has Charlie grow, blown in the dark? For legal reasons, I can't. <laughs> so uh, to give you the answer, because you're obviously not going to get this, it is called phosphines. Phosphines. I know, I'm probably pronouncing all of these wrong, but uh, we'll, go, we'll go with what, what I'm going with. <laughs> well, imagine that. That's mighty interesting. So, you know, you know the little plastic little thing that you get that looks like a little table in a pizza box? It's sat in the middle. Okay. And it stops the box squishing your pizza. So if the cheese attacks into the top. Mm-hmm. Do you know what that's called? Trying the plastic thing that stops the cheese sticking to my box. No, it's it's much simpler than that. Thingy. The thingy. Think about the think about what it what it's inside of. <laughs> the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> the pizza what? The pizza. No! <laughs> what contains the pizza? The pizza? <laughs> Let's just stick it in. Inside the... Check your presentation, actually. Well, it's very simple, as obviously you are. It is... I'm just different. <laughs> <laughs> they call it a box tent. Now, that's what I used to call my ex. <laughs> because it's it's like a baby's arm holding a pit. Well, anyway, <laughs> that's mighty interesting. <laughs> but I think that's enough for now, just because I'm thinking about my ex one. Um, yeah, that's enough. Um, stick around, because coming up next, we have Mist and Spotlight. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now we try and understand why he's laughing so much as we get deep into his inner workings as it's missed in Spotlight. Right, what am I in for? So what we've got here, we've got the Jar of Joy. Uh-huh. Which is, is um, hideous. <laughs> uh, but in there we've got a selection of questions. Uh-huh. And it's an either-or kind of question. Mm -hmm. Just to get to know you a little bit better. Are you sure you want to do that? It might be, you know, it might be just some random questions about, you know, what you like to do. It might be a bit intimate. Yeah, so. Ooh. Okay, so the first one. Mm hmm Would you rather be a dog or be a cat? Ooh. A cat, because then I can do what the I want. Well, dogs can too. Yeah, but mm, you kind of expect it with a cat dogs you try to train and I can't be doing with that being told what to do. But you get fed as treats. So as cats, a cat you do? No, no, no. As cats you basically go, I'm hungry and you get fed, right? Mm. Dogs, you get that, that, you know, little, oh, I've done something like sit down, I'll get a treat. Just for sitting. Or I can not bother to do anything at all and still get treats. Dogs get more treats. Mm. Is that a training you do? You feed food As reward. I said again, I'm on a diet, so... You're a dog, you wouldn't be on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so the next one. Okay. After being, you're choosing pussy. Um, would you... <laughs> uh, would you rather be barefoot in a public bathroom or barefoot going through stinging nettles? And I'm going to be very specific on the public bathroom. It's the gents in the eagle. Well, that's an easy one to answer because I, I know what I've done in both scenarios. 
Uh, let's go. When I'm walking in nature, I do wear boots. So you're walking barefoot into eagles toilets? Oh yeah, I've done that, for sure. Choices have been made. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is less of a would you rather, it's just a choice of two things, mm -hmm. fisting and felching. Why did I know this one was going to come up? Because you, I said it before and you went, <laughs> 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 And I thought there's a story there. Uh, well, from my understanding of the terms, I'm not into animal cruelty and um, I have I have got the nickname Bagger, so <laughs> I think we can tell which way that's going. Okay. Um, would you rather find yourself in a bath of spiders or in a bath of cockroaches? Oh. How uh, do you feel about spiders is the main question there, because I like them. It's, my natural reaction isn't to like them, but I get over it. But I okay. can't watch Arachnophobia, that's terrifying. That's a brilliant film. It's horrible, I can't watch it. Wheels when it when they shoot them with a nail gun. Yeah. Like if, Looking at them from a distance, jar of a top. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not somebody who sees a spider and screams and goes running away. I can okay. just, you know, sort them out. That's all fine and dandy. Sort them out. <laughs> <laughs> spider porn is apparently a thing. Well, they've got the eight legs. You know, they can do things for themselves. But sometimes it's just nice to have a friend help you out. Um... <laughs> for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. That's, that's not up and close, but it's, cockroaches are worse. They're just so much worse. They yeah. have legs as well. Those I don't help out, I'll just whack them. <laughs> so you won't wank off a cockroach, is what we've learnt there. <laughs> Spider. Spider. Just a little bit of a... There you go, mate. Oh, sorry. Cockroach, <laughs> sort yourself out. <laughs> this, this, is, this is the level of intellectual discussion we're having on the show. Welcome to Chewing the Cud. This is not University Challenge, for those of you who've tuned in and are a little bit confused. Why Jeremy Paxson's suddenly gone a little bit camp. <laughs> oh. So, next question. Would you rather have a super strength or super intelligence? Ah. Uh, which one of those have I got already? I'll have the other. <laughs> have to pick one. <laughs> this or this. Um, I, I've, I've, I've been going to the gym unsuccessfully for many, many years now, and it's never been about strength. It's always about trying to look pretty. Um, so I'll take uh, intelligence, please. Okay, nice. Beauty fades, dummies forever. Yes. I believe the phrase is. Um, I recently went to the gym for 14 days in a row. Well done. Yes. Was there somebody cute there? Nope. You were just doing it on your own efforts. I, I was doing it by choice. I went down to the gym and went, I'm going to go to the gym every day. And I went to the gym every day. And after the 14 weeks, do you know what I realised? You like pizza. I, no, because I was still eating pizza going to the gym. Um, <laughs> there's just no real point. Do you, did you, how, how was your mental health when you were doing it? Atrocious because I felt self conscious <laughs> and sweaty, and I don't like sweating, especially in public. I go religiously every morning, but it's not so much anymore about that. It is, it just does my head so much good. I do not, I do not function at well, work properly. You have any head while I was there. <laughs> 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 it's the wrong thing, obviously. I don't get any nookie when I'm at the gym either. You just said it was good for your head. Yeah, different type of head. I wasn't going for filth. <laughs> I don't understand the words that just coming out of my mouth. Um, next question. Um, <laughs> would you rather have... Why is it all superpowers? <laughs> Not having more superpowers. Right, um, would you rather only be able to whisper or only be able to shout? Ooh. I've got quite a boomy old theatre kid voice anyway, so... A little Brian Blessed. A little Brian Blessed going on, yeah. <laughs> Gordon's alive! Um, <laughs> I'm, like aware, I'm aware like of it? this. I think the choice has been made for me by life. Okay. <laughs> I 
You I should like hear me in the throes of passion. It's like a mastodon dying. How would you know? Because they've been extinct for a long time. <laughs> uh, the same way they do dinosaur noises in Jurassic Park. <laughs> do you think a T-Rex is so angry because he just he's got so shut and can't? Just and he sees me wanking off a spider who's got eight legs. Exactly. Furious. <laughs> You'd have to wank off a T-Rex. Would he kiss me in the morning? <laughs> I don't think he'd want a T-Rex. Heavy meat diet. Breath would be a bit like dating someone with Atkins. Anyway, um, <laughs> would you like to sing like a diva? Or play the guitar like a rock star? Oh, my music tastes are more rock, but... Are you not a Britney Spears fan? No, not really. Well... Christina Aguilera? Dirty. I tend to listen to music. I don't go to clubs and stuff much anymore, but I listen to a lot, a lot of music when I'm on the treadmill, um, okay. or on the elliptical, rather, and just sing my little heart out. It's that one cross-trainer thing. Oh, right, like the that? drunk walker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you walk like you've had a lot to drink or some of the other. Yeah. yeah. I absolutely love just rocking out on that one. And it's all pop star music, like Ariana Grande and stuff like that, but mixed with old heavy metal tunes into a house mix. And it's, it's absolutely insane. You've never enjoyed corn quite as much as when it's been mixed with Taylor Swift. Right, corn the song, not not the stuff you can't have your bottom in there. No, corn the band. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very old metal. <laughs> anyway, uh, would you rather live in space or under the sea? Oh, I'm so tempted to sing a Disney song then, but we probably don't have the rights. Um, song about about sex. <laughs> it's better than where it's wetter. No, this is true. Yeah. Um, yeah. This this I. The idea of great open spaces terrifies me. The idea of like you know any of well, those you know, movies where the space. cord gets cut and you, you know, fly in off open into space. space. You, you're in a vacuum. You're in a void. Yeah, it's horrible. Terrifying. Okay. Or drowning. At any moment, Dad, you, you, you can swim to the surface. You can mm, get to some land. How deep you, you can are. float. They, you understand where the surface is. All, all of that sort. Because in, in space, you know, if you, your core did break, and you're going, "I'm dead." You can just take off your helmet, and you'd be dead within a second because your head explodes. Yeah, but that's not the way I want to go. You know, floating there, flaccid, unable to do anything, and then just suddenly your head explodes. This was my last date. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you had an issue. You tried. It didn't work. But um, anyway, that's all for now. Um, so thank you, Mist, for joining us and letting us interrogate you. Uh, just remember to join us on our social media at the Cud TV. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all soon. Bye. So there's other questions on here as well. What if there's something about what would you like your head size to be? But well, I thought that was a bit inappropriate. You have been man-spreading through the whole show, so... <laughs>